Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna to show you how I created my Bahama marble cup that I did a while ago. It's one of my most favorite designs and it's a lot more simpler than you think. So I'm really excited to show you guys this technique. I'm doing what I like to call like a three layer marble technique. And that's just because you're gonna create the look of real marble with different layers of mediums. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. You know I'm gonna have all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that I've already prime painted white with just a regular flat white spray paint. And I'm going to roughly section off half of the cup with some blue masking tape. This step is totally optional. But what we're trying to do here in this little three layer marble situation is the glitter layer that we're putting down here will be a little bit different from the glitter layer that we're putting on the other side with the palm leaves. This side that we're doing for the marble will have some like gray or silver glitter integrated into this white glitter that we're using. So I'm using epoxy method. I've got about five milliliters of epoxy mixed here and I'm gonna spread just one tiny, tiny amount onto this half side. Should be way less than one milliliter of epoxy that you're spreading on here. And I'm going to start by using this silver kind of gold extra fine glitter from PT Olive Glitters. It's called Silver Bells. Any kind of like gray or silver glitter will work great for this step. And I am just going to randomly put in some bursts of this color in random spots. So we're just going to go really high up and lightly sprinkle some of that gray or silver glitter in random parts of the cup. We don't want to go overboard, just very light amounts of this glitter. We're going to use flurries from Peachy Olive Glitters, which is just a white pearl matte uh, white glitter and we're gonna let it rip all over that entire half of the cup. We're gonna go right over that silver bells. And what I'm trying to do is create like a realistic looking like glitter layer for our marble. If you look at some marble, there's like veins of like glittery sections. I think you maybe see that more in quartz. Um, so that's all we're doing here. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't need to blend the silver and the white. In fact, we want it to look more organic than what we would normally do. After I've got that white on there, I'm going to let it rip again with the silver bells just to put in some more sparkle to that pearly white. Alternatively, if you wanted to mix your silver with that flurries, you could do that, but I like the look of just going over it and filling any spots that we might have missed. So here's what we've got so far. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that tape right away. And then we are going to glitter the other half of our cup with just the plain white because the other half will be where we lay the palm tree print and I don't wanna have any kind of variations in color on that side. I really just want a nice white base with a small bit of sparkle. Wait for that other side to dry before I laid down the glitter on the other side. I just, again, repeated the same steps that we did to apply the glitter to the front half, and I just tried really carefully to spread my epoxy as close to that other line as possible without, like, moving a bunch of glitter around. I didn't do that great of a job. If you can see, I've got some of that leftover glitter all over my gloves there, but it's not a big deal. Most of the cup is white glitter with the exception of that silver glitter on the other side, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. Right, and so once we've got the whole cup glittered, I'm gonna set this on my rack to dry for about two to three hours, and then we're gonna move into our first coat of epoxy. This first coat is just 30 milliliters of epoxy. And once I get this applied, I'm gonna let it dry for four to six hours and I'll immediately go into a second coat after that. My second coat will dry for eight to 12 hours and I only used about 20 milliliters for my second coat. 
So after those two coats were dry, I moved on to any kind of necessary sanding that we had to do around the top and bottom rim, any kind of sanding I might have had to do along the sides. Uh, and then I washed it off with dish soap and water. And next we are going to work on applying our water slide. I'm first going to tape off what was supposed to be our marble side. And you can tell that it's our marble side because it's going to have some of that silver glitter mixed in. You should be able to see a pretty clear enough line between the all white section and the mixed silver and white section. I'm going to roughly tape that off with some masking tape. And then I'm going to use saran wrap to mask off the remainder of my cup. Next, I'm going to take some flat white spray paint and I'm just going to spray some sporadic areas around my cup. This is part of the layering that we're doing to create a realistic marble look. Here's what we've got so far. So this is what we want where we have little bursts of white paint, very organic looking so that we can see some of that glitter layer below. I'm going to remove my masking tape and then I'm going to spray my entire cup with clear coat spray paint, this gloss clear paint. We need to do this because we do still have some dull sanding marks and flat white paint areas that need to be glossy before we apply our water slide. You never want to apply clear water slide to a dull or sanded surface. All right, so these are the two images that we're using for our water slide today. I have printed them edge to edge on a A4 size sheet of water slide. I will link the type of water slide that I like to use down below. And for these images, one of them I found on Pinterest, the palm trees a long time ago. I will try and link the source on those palm trees down in the description box. And the Carrera marble print, I can't find where I got that because again, I got it from a long time ago. However, rest assured, I'm gonna have plenty of links for alternatives in the description box on where you can find these images or ones like it. I printed these edge to edge through Google Docs. And if you need help with that, I will also link the tutorial that I have for printing edge to edge water slide. I've sealed this three times with Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray paint, and now we're ready to apply it. I'm going to cut these images out. Keep in mind, you guys, this is two different images that I printed on one sheet of water slide. So you're gonna wanna add both images to your Google Doc and print them out like this. If you're using a cup that's bigger than 20 ounces, then you'll probably want to print on two separate sheets of water slide. And I also would not recommend a project like this on a cup that is really curved or like a traditional curve. I'm gonna cut off the edges of my water slide because we sealed it all the way to the edge. And if we don't trim those edges off, it will have a really hard time separating from the paper backing. I've got a tub of some room temp water here that we're going to submerge our water slide into. We're gonna start off with the marble side first. And the water temp here is about room temp. Maybe it might be like 70, 75 degrees for your water temp. I'm gonna let it sit in the water for a good two to three minutes until that water slide is completely detached from the paper backing and slides around freely. That water slide is ready to go. We're going to take our cup and kind of dip the cup in the water. We want to get the surface of this cup totally wet. And then I'm going to put my water slide kind of back in the tub. The goal here is to keep everything as wet as possible through application to avoid cracking. And we also want to avoid touching the surface or the backing of our water slide with our fingers. So here I'm just lining up that edge of my image with the same edge that we created when we did our little half and half glitter situation, okay? And we're applying this marble image over the side that we did the silver glitter and the white spray paint spurts. 
obviously. <laughs> All right. And then I'm using like this uh, silicone brush tool to squeegee out the water. Notice I'm not using any paper towels or anything. Again, we're doing this to keep the surface of our water slide moist for as long as possible to avoid cracking. And most of the time, the paper backing is left on the water slide for as long as possible and we're just sealing small bits of our image as we go all right we're not trying to do it all in one fell swoop and we're keeping everything wet for the whole duration of this application process once i've got everything on there nice and smooth i'm still just using my silicone brush tool to push out any sort of bubbles. Locate where the line, the center line is between the all white glitter and the silvery white glitter. And I'm going to trim off the edge of our water slide with a really sharp craft knife. So you definitely want to make sure before you apply your water slide that you've sized it in a way that you'll have a one inch overlap on both sides to give yourself a little room. You'll notice that I don't have any kind of salvaged ends really on the top and bottom of my cup. Um, that's because when we print edge to edge those two images on the water slide, we should have just enough to cover both halves with a little bit of extra wiggle room to help us out. All right, so once we've got this all squeegeed out and everything's looking good, I am going to set this on my rack to dry for a good 20 to 30 minutes. Up at the top and bottom edge here, I'm just smoothing those out with my finger to pull out any wrinkles. And really that's just a matter of pressing firmly and stretching very slightly with my finger to roll it around the rim of the cup. All right, so after that's been drying for about 20 to 30 minutes, we should have something that looks a little like this. And then we're going to repeat that same process on the other side, this time with our palm image. And we really want to be careful to line up the edges really nicely so that the seam of the palms meets the seam of the marble image very gracefully. The problem with that is that our marble image is very transparent and <laughs> it's really hard to tell where it starts and ends. So just try and do your best with that and line them up as well as you can. The good news is, is that both of these prints are really forgiving and you're gonna find that with your application, um, they hide mistakes and cracks and things like that really well. And those are the type of images that I love to work with, with projects like this. So here again, you're going to see that I'm just lining up that first edge there and using my silicone brush, we're going to anchor that first side down and then slowly start to pull out our paper backing, squeegeeing out any kind of bubbles as we go, keeping everything as moist as possible, again, to avoid cracking. Once we've got all of that applied, we're going to use our super sharp craft knife and run that along the edge where the marble print and the palm print meet. Yes, this is really hard because it's really difficult to see where that marble print ends. You can see a little bit of a raised seam underneath the palm print, so that does help you determine, you know, the line to run your knife against. And then if you need to trim off any remainder after that, you can just to make sure everything's nice and straight. To continue to go around the cup with my silicone brush to squeegee out any bubbles that might pop up. Keep in mind that water slide does shrink a little bit as it's drying and so as it's contracting it can cause bubbles to pop up later. That's why sometimes when you apply water slide you'll see it's totally smooth, everything looks great, and then when you go to put on epoxy you see some bubbles. That's because it did do some shrinkage that could have caused air bubbles later on. So you do just want to keep an eye on it as it's drying, keep the surface as moist as possible as it's drying. You don't want to completely dry it out with the paper towels when you're doing large images like this. 
I'm gonna let this dry for about an hour before I go into epoxy. I'm not going to seal it before epoxy. We're just going to do a regular layer right over this. So this layer of epoxy is about 20 milliliters and I don't think I used all of it. And we're just going to apply it like we normally would and I'm gonna let this one dry for about eight to 12 hours. And now we're ready to apply the vinyl lines. I've already got these cut using my Cricut. I just used the shape feature in Cricut Design Space and cut four squares that were 11.5 inches wide by 0.15 inches tall. I'm going to cut off our excess water slide using a sharp craft knife around the rim here. And any excess water slide that's on the inside, I'll remove with acetone later when we do our finishing. And once we've got that rim all cleaned up, I'm going to make sure that I don't have any kind of bumps or sharp edges or anything along the side of my cups where my vinyl lines will be. If I feel any kind of bumps, I'll just do a light sanding and then rinse off my cup really quick. You just really wanna make sure that those sides are completely smooth before you lay down your vinyl lines. I'm just gonna lay these by hand using the natural lines of our design to guide me. And then I will trim off the excess at a diagonal when I reach the bottom of my cup. I'm gonna repeat that process on the other side. So both sides of our center line here is lined with the vinyl. And then up there at the top rim, you wanna make sure that you've trimmed off a good amount from the top edge. That way you're able to easily seal it with epoxy. You can see the distance that I leave right here. That way it goes over that nice and smoothly when you put on your final layer of epoxy. I'm going to apply some diagonal lines down here at the bottom half. Again, just kind of eyeballing it and then trimming off the excess with a sharp craft knife where both ends meet. I'm putting a double line here and again, I just eyeballed it. I didn't do a very good job at eyeballing this one, but whatever, it looks fine. Once we've got all of our vinyl lines laid down, I'm gonna go over it one more time with my vinyl scraper to make sure everything is adhered really strongly. And then we'll go into our final coats of epoxy. Normally I would seal my vinyl with countercultures, quick coat, water-based urethane sealer, or like a polycrylic, but I just didn't feel the need to because I'm using metallic matte vinyl, which tends to lay really nicely for me. This final coat of epoxy is about 20 milliliters of epoxy, and I'm just going to apply it how I normally do. I ended up doing two coats of epoxy to get this one totally smooth, and that was it. We we're totally done. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and if you liked our video, please be sure to give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.